economists tell us, spend the money, invest the money for those who need it the most because they will spend it, it will be a stimulus or at least a stabilization of, of uh, and, and that's a good thing. The argument is over how much is appropriate at this particular juncture as we struggle to get the economy back. According to state officials in Connecticut, healthcare workers, grocery store employees, and private sector employees who staff vital services during the first two years of the crisis can begin applying for up to $1,000. It won't be clear until early October where the applicants will receive as much as $1,000, and that's because legislators and the governor, Ned Lamont, allocated just $30 million for the program. He said that Connecticut's essential workers have gone above and beyond during the crisis to keep us safe, keep, to keep the state running and safe. The new premium pay program is another way for us to return the favor, for these funds are truly meaningful. Every essential worker needs to know that they're available to be eligible. An applicant must have worked between March 10th and May 7th of 2022 in one of these, in one of these occupations that the state has listed. Some of the frontline workers in these categories include healthcare personnel. Eligible applicants must earn at less. Some of the frontline workers in these categories include healthcare personnel, food and agricultural workers, grocery store staff, and public transit workers. Applicants must earn less than 150 grand per year and cannot be employed by a federal or state entity. Full-time workers who earn less than 100 grand can apply for a $1,000 grant. Those earning more than 100,000 but less than 150,000 are eligible for grants on a sliding scale, ranging as low as 200. Part-timers working less than 30 hours a week can apply for a $500 grant. The application period will run up till, until October 1st and the goal is to process request within a 60-day window. And for, his comp for the company of Lowe's, the CEO said, then recognition of high inflation, we're providing, five, we're providing $55 million in bonuses to our hourly frontline associates this quarter. And though there has been a slight decrease in gas and travel costs, recently the impacts of inflation are still affecting Americans, making it tougher for families to afford groceries and other essential goods. Microsoft, ExxonMobil, Walmart, USA have also offered bonuses, pay raises, and even gift cards to employees. But still, many of the but still many of the nation's employees, employers are still not paying their workers a living wage. The company website states that Lowe's employees around 300,000 associates, but it is not specified how much money each worker each worker will receive and over what time period. I mean, the White House and the administration and Democrats up on Capitol Hill. Uh, earlier today, both the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and the Senate Republican leader, the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, were on CNBC, and they explained really the fundamental philosophical dilemma here, uh, which is all about how much is the U.S. government going to spend. Here's what they said. Back on its feet and get the country in a place where it can sustain itself uh, until we get a vaccine. Now, Melissa, lawmakers have talked about an idea of having a deal by Friday morning. It looks like there's not a whole lot of time to pull something that big together uh, by that timeline. But uh, one of the questions about this meeting on Capitol Hill that's going on now is can they at least agree to that price tag? Can they come up with a figure? Uh, Republicans have been around $1 trillion, Democrats have been $3 trillion or higher. Uh, can they agree on a compromise figure? Can they just simply call it $2 trillion and start negotiating about what's going to be in there? That might be something that's doable this hour, but we'll wait and see what they say when, we come, when they come out of those closed doors. That Friday deadline is tomorrow Friday, right, Eamon? Not next Friday, not the fall. It's yeah, tomorrow right. Friday. Right. And then the Senate goes right. on a so, scheduled recess. Yeah. Right. So the idea that they're going to have something by tomorrow is yeah. looking increasingly far-fetched, I think you say. And the Senate would still go to recess? Yeah, look, there's a possibility. Tonight. And Joe had never had a doubt. <laughs> Joe had an operation on his shoulder. I just want you to know it wasn't because of anything we did. <laughs> He's in great shape. And uh, our whip... Clyburn, you're, uh, you're amazing, and I am reminded often by my staff, were not for you, your wife telling you to endorse me, I wouldn't be standing there. But thank you very, very much. And also, uh, Congressman... Nancy Pelosi is now preparing a vote on Democrats' brand new stimulus checks. 
Bernie Sanders is also working with lawmakers to push for the renewal of a monthly stimulus check, everybody. So you want to be sure to continue watching to never miss out on the most important stimulus news. Today, President Biden signed a bipartisan bill that aims to strengthen U.S. competitive. Go to advancingamericanfreedom.com. You'll see we spent a lot of time on it. Uh, our organization has actually spent the better part of $10 million already in the last four months. In Dr. Shah's position are often put in front of the media and they have 12 seconds to respond to very difficult issues. And meanwhile, people are reading social media and they're hearing this study and that study and people say, what the hell is going on? So I hope we'll have a few minutes to get into a little bit more depth about some of the very serious issues surrounding COVID. Let me begin. Uh, and, and by the way, many of the questions that I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Jha came from Facebook. We asked people uh, to come up with you know, ideas that were on their minds. Everyone, $200 bonus checks are being sent out right now to millions of Americans, and new financial assistance has been approved for low-income households. More and more people are showing their support for new inflation relief checks. And here is some big news. The New York governor has also announced that New York families on public assistance can expect an additional boost to their wallets this month to help cover back to school costs. The one-time payments come as inflation has tightened households' budgets across the country, making the annual shopping trip for notebooks, pencils, and backpacks a greater financial burden, particularly for low-income families. State officials begin distributing the money this week. Families on public assistance will receive $214 for each of their children. For each child under three, families will receive $150. Public assistance provides cash to low-income families for up to six months, who may have trouble meeting basic needs like housing. The extra help could provide some relief for families who had also benefited from the expanded child tax credit, which provided extra money to more families with children. The Rhode Island governor announced this week a one-time child tax rebate for families that will begin rolling out this fall. According to the governor, the rebate includes $250 per child for up to three children in a household and will automatically be sent to eligible families starting in October without any separate applications needed. Some 115,000 Rhode Island households are expected to receive the check. The governor told reporters, our administration is committed to targeting tax relief to Rhode Islanders as we continue to build on our state's economic momentum. Supporting parents and, and, and their children with Rhode Island's new child tax rebate is a sensible and critical way to grow our economy. The policy was established, everybody, in the 2023 fiscal year. It will be administered by the Rhode Island Division of Taxation. The move comes amid skyrocketing inflation and stubborn and high gas prices affecting many parts of the country. And now this is awesome news, as I know many people are currently struggling with inflation, especially with the rising cost of living. The State House Speaker has also noted that the state had a budget surplus and received federal funds to help pay for the program. To be eligible, individual filers in Rhode Island must earn $100,000 or less, and joint filers must earn $200,000 or less. Additionally, each resident must have claimed at least one child under the age of 18 as a dependent by December 31st, 2021 on income taxes. Inflation was in the 1970s after an oil supply shock, and today Democrats' radical policies are leading to a similar shock in the terms of energy. Since April 2021, prices have risen at at least 5% every month. And this year, under one-party control, 